Hi and welcome back. I'm Caroline. This is my three-year-old gelding, thoroughbred blue. Welcome back to Everything Horses and More YouTube channel and video library. So this month we're dedicating videos to training and developing horses. Today's video is specifically about when to start riding young horses. This month is dedicated to training or developing horses holistically, mindfully, and strategically. What I'm about to tell you is not common knowledge, at least not until now. I have worked with and developed thousands of young horses in my time, ages ranging from weanlings to three-year-olds. My experience has taught me the following. The ages of zero to six months, weanlings need to bond. That is the most important thing to them. So if you're out there imprinting and handling a young baby horse, just bond with them. Don't try to make them do anything. Get a halter on them and leave it on. But I am so sick of seeing all these videos where people are pulling these young horses around. They've got ropes around their bodies, teaching them how to lead. So I'm gonna give you a really awesome way to teach a young weanling how to lead. Lead its mother, put the halter and a lead rope on the weanling and lead the weanling with its mom and understand that the weanling doesn't know what's going on. It's gonna be active, hyper. It's probably gonna try to run this way, jump that way, and pull you all over the place. All you have to do is just hold, hold that lead rope. Just let the weanling figure out that it can't get away from you and that it will release itself. It'll learn how to release itself instead of fighting with these young horses. It starts at that age. Everyone is making it happen. Young horse is gonna figure out and they're easy enough to handle that handling should be done at that level at that age. Halter, lead rope, be ready. This is where ignorance and a lack of education is. Be ready to know that that young horse is all excited. It's gonna to wanna to dart and run that way and run back to its mom. And all of a sudden you've got it in a halter and a lead rope. So you better be prepared for it to pull on you big time. But all you gotta do is just hold. Anchor that lead rope right by your thigh and hold or around your midsection, your core, and just hold. Mama's right there, it's gonna come. It's not gonna go too far, right? You're just teaching one of the most fundamental and important things to a young horse. Don't pull away, respect the tension that you've created, not me. Because they're gonna fight you. They all do. That's youth. That's a young horse. It's oppositional by nature. It's gonna fight. Don't make it a fight. Don't hurt its pole. Don't make it flip over. Don't hurt its body. Don't strain it. Just oh, you holding it enough. It, that will be enough. And I'm not saying that accidents won't happen. I had the misfortune when I was in Italy for a week of training a couple of years ago and working with some of the top reigning horses in the world and they were starting a breeding program with the stallions and we had, they had rescued many horses, many top reigning horses and brood mares and stallions. And this one baby had never been handled. Um, nobody knew how to handle him. So I think he was eight months old and I'm thinking crap. He's going to be pretty strong and he's a little colt. So I finally was able to get a halter on him. And he was a type of eight month old colt that when they were coming to the gate, he was rearing up and attacking them. I mean, he didn't know any better. And that's what he would do naturally if he was out with other young baby horses. That's what they do. And thank God my client is amazing and didn't want to be beating this young horse off of, but he, he did, he broke someone's arm. And I mean, it was crazy, turn around and double barrel kick at you, but that's what they do. That's why you wanna, as a breeder, you want your babies and your <laughs> brood mares and their babies out together. So as babies, they can play and exert that and figure out the pecking order and hierarchy naturally. So let the, let them, get that out of their system. He didn't know any different. So I get in there and all I do is make sure that he's respecting my space with the whip. 
he didn't know what that was. He came running full blast right up to me. And way before he got to me, I just was very assertive with my whip. That stopped him in his tracks. And then I worked on him being curious, his natural curiosity. Um, he's very bold, obviously, to come up to me <clears throat> without trying to hurt me and, uh, and put a halter on him attached to a lead rope. So eventually, honestly, this didn't take that long because I'm, I'm pretty good at what I do. <clears throat> and the horse was not scared. So that helped tremendously. He was just way too bold. So <laughs> it didn't take long as soon as that halter got on, where did I go to my power position with the lead rope? And he went to bolt. And he went that way. I anchored here and he flipped himself over backwards. And he laid there. He didn't even try to get up. He wasn't stunned. He just laid there looking at me. I've seen this happen quite a few times, you guys. And it was one of the best things that could have happened for him and me because he was so bold and so dangerous and so cocky that he was in the most vulnerable position. He put himself there. I didn't. He didn't know what happened. But he laid there mentally stunned like, huh, what just happened? And I just waited and he got up, shook himself off, and I swear it was like night and day. He was so submissive for the lack of a better word. And sometimes in those situations, things like that have to happen, especially he had already injured two of the staff. So this isn't something that you'd want to happen to all young horses by any means. But when you have a young horse that has grown up wild like that, but not in a healthy wild way, because he hasn't been able to live with other young horses and other mothers who would have scolded him, he had no boundaries. And his mom was one of the worst swaybacks I'd ever seen as a broodmare. She had what Smokey had, Sabrina. She was literally buckled like, um, what do you call it with humans? When- Pigeon toes? Not pigeon toed. When they call it with old cowboys, you yes. guys. I can't think of it. But the mom was like this in her front legs, completely sway back, and he was jumping on her night and day. So that was an extreme situation that really needed it to just happen naturally. I knew what to do. I knew what was going to happen, and I let it play out naturally. This isn't, that isn't something I can teach you or would teach you. But I'm just bringing that up because these are young horses and with young minds. And the, so much of what I'm talking about is normal. And you've got to be prepared for this stuff. So if you've never had a young horse, you have no education. You have no experience to guide you. So that's why I'm doing this video and why I've done my other courses to help talk about things that no one else is really sharing that knowledge and how to do it holistically and lovingly, but with leadership and boundaries. That's just one example of how you can help teach a wean lane, and you better do it before six months of age, how to wear a halter and how to lead. But know that there's still gonna be rambunctious, there's still gonna be days, even as a two and three year old where he forgets about me, and he's going that way. But he's so used to that pressure and he's like oh I didn't have to do anything I just held and he's like oh I, I know what that means and he respects it and he releases himself so all learning and cognitive development for a weanling especially zero to six months this is so key is done by means of their mother and the bond with their mother and through emotional connection bonding rituals that nurture and create natural tendencies, habits. So what do we do with our weanlings? We wean them at least by the age of five to six months, take them away from their mom, and then <laughs> we influence them. Or an older horse, surrogate horse influences them. But what are we or the older horse teaching them? So if you haven't studied wild horses and the dynamic, you know, again, I bring this up all the time in wild herds. The babies stay with their moms at least until the age of two. 
the colts at that point, their testosterone is really matured and it's time for them to take a hike and go find their own mares. And horses, like most animals, instinctively know not to interbreed. But the, the baby girls, the fillies, they're allowed to stay. And they'll most of the time choose to stay because family is so important. And familiarization, being with horses of like mind is so important. They, they get to pick and choose. And so they'll often go out or a rogue stallion will be hanging around a loner and they'll get impregnated, but they'll bring, they'll raise their baby off that babes. They'll raise their baby with their mom, their grandmother, their aunts, their cousins. It's pretty amazing. They need that mama raising them for two years. Just like our kids need us as parents guiding them, basically up till the age of 18, unless they prove otherwise. And still at 18, that is so young. So young horses, it's all about bonding, love and leadership. The mom's starting to teach them boundaries, but within reason, she lets all mamas let their babies jump all over them until a certain point. And then they start to wean them off gradually. Like that's enough, that's enough. You're getting bigger, you're getting stronger. Go play with your friends. And this is what helps a young horse mature emotionally and mentally, cognitively, cognitively. This is key. There are so many studies out there on the human brain and how if we are as orphaned, if we are orphaned and we don't get the level of emotional bonding, connection and stimulation as an infant, it really can destroy our cognitive abilities. We don't just learn a lot of really awful coping mechanisms, but it definitely stunts part of our brain. So like children, young horses absorb everything quickly, but without consistency and repetition, they forget just as easily. Like children, they need freedom to explore and healthy boundaries to guide them. From the ages of six to 12 months, they go through another developmental stage where they begin to explore more, gain autonomy from their mom. How this is called being involved. Blue is right here through this whole process of paper and white and the noise, which he was taught by Lovey in Sundance how to fear. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, babe. I got this, you cut it. So even if he's with Lovey and Sundance and they get spooked about something like this, Blue will react, but he quickly comes right back to me in the paper. He doesn't stay there. So this is great. This is just a great example of involving your horse in everything you do so he starts to think about it, feel safe and comfortable. Come here, baby. I have to read the last bit of this, sweetie. Come here. So yeah. I have to read you guys when I'm standing in front of the camera. That's no secret. It's a lot of information and I really wanna to try to stay on point because y'all know I can ramble. <laughs> that feel good. So now we're talking about, come here, Beba, six months to 12 months. And young horses, you know, they'll start to explore. They go through another de developmental stage where they get a little more autonomy, independence from their mom they learn to socialize. That's why it's so important to have baby horses with other baby horses or young horses. And they're ready for gradual increases in their daily learning from us specifically. And their moms already know this. So a yearling's level or aptitude for learning is equivalent to a five-year-old child. You wouldn't expect a five-year-old child to be ready for first or second grade. So don't expect a yearling to be able to do or handle what a two-year-old can. Same goes for a two-year-old, ready to handle what a three-year-old can. Thank you for that bop in the head. So this is normal and it should be respected and guided with love and leadership. Meaning don't get mad at your young horse for doing things that are just normal for young horses. No different than getting mad at your kid for needing to do certain things that remember when you were a kid. So it doesn't mean we allow our young horse or child to be disrespectful 
you got to have some love and leadership. You got to have boundaries. You got to help them learn what's acceptable behavior and what isn't. But within the confines of flexibility and understanding. So two and three year old horses are like hormonal teenagers. They're like 12 and 15 year olds. They still need their parents to feel secure and guide them, but they fight it constantly as they naturally try to develop healthy levels of autonomy and interdependence at the same time. Like teenagers, young horses can't focus for too long. They need constant reminders and guidance that doesn't destroy their self-esteem or dignity. And one of the key things is it's like going to school. One of the beauties of school and classroom is that it gradually develops the young child's mind slowly. And so that the young child, by the time you're a teenager and then a young adult, you can handle more and more information. You can handle more discipline and focus. And that's the key thing. Why would we ask a two-year-old to have the same kind of focus that we know a five or six-year-old horse has? A lot of this is just because you guys don't have the experience and you're, you're listening to how other trainers are doing it and they are absolutely bastardizing the whole process of training. It should be developing. We should be learning, we should change the language. We are developing these young horses into amazing riding horses. So again, like teenagers, young horses can't focus for too long. We've got to build that through habituation, that discipline of the mind. Little by little by little and before you know it, the horse can handle a pretty intense session without getting frustrated, confused, flipping out mentally because they're oversaturated. So with time, consistency, patience, and love, your young horse or child will develop into a healthy, well-rounded, contributing individual. It just takes time and knowing how to proceed. So again, why would I put my one to two year old horse into intense training at such an early age knowing what I know now, knowing what you know? So like children, all young horses are unique and individuals. They can't be made or molded into anything but what they show you they are capable of becoming. It's our job as loving and responsible parents of our young horses and kids to understand this natural process protect it, honor it, and respect it. Understand that with time, consistency, patience, and guidance, each will blossom and reflect our efforts the best they can. So if you have a troubled young horse who got a rough start, like Blue, and needs to be restarted with love and leadership, I've created a great course called Restarting the Challenging Young Horse Course. And then of course you have my Mastery Membership Riding Foundation program. There's the way we begin, you can begin with a weanling easily. All right, thank you. We are gonna show you, give you a couple of demonstrations here about how to involve your horse in the learning process. And remember, this is a snippet. My Everything Horses and More video library will have the full length video. So I'm gonna invite Blue over to the bareback pad. I am also gonna put him in the rope halter because I don't know what to expect and I don't want him to fear anything. And Blue, as I've mentioned before, is um, a very sensitive, incredibly smart horse. Talk about p learning things right away for the first time. And so, see, everything's an opportunity, guys. I was using steady pressure on his cheek to move him away from me. Everything's an opportunity with young horses especially to mold them. You just don't wait until the day that you're training them. Everything, the way you handle them, the way you're, everything's an opportunity. So I'm gonna put this on quick because he wants to put it in his mouth. So just put it on quick. That's another thing everybody asks me about. Oh, everything goes in my horse's mouth. Well, figure it out. Let's do that again. I know that he's gonna wanna go for it. Nope, interrupt it and put it on fast. There you go. Don't make it a big deal. Don't make him feel bad about wanting to do something he it wants to do innately, or he's gonna, you're gonna break his trust every time. So there's no warm up for this. Look, everything you do as you develop a horse, I don't care what age they are or restart them, everything you do 
should be about trust. The horse trusts you, the horse has confidence in you, the horse feels safe and, and comfortable with you. Bottom line. So he's seen this a million times because he sees it on all his buddies all the time. So we don't need to go through, oh, smell it, Blue. Blue's seen it a million times. It's been in his mouth a million times. It's not about that. It's about, okay, Blue, wait, wait, wait. here's steady pressure again. Isn't that nice? Thank you, baby. So he's connected. He's thinking, right? He gets a blanket in the winter sometimes, so that's not an issue. The biggest difference, and this is not a saddle, obviously, it doesn't have stirrups. The biggest difference is gonna be the girth. Because that's what everybody talks about, right? Or sees in these videos is, oh my gosh, I girthed the horse up and he started bucking. Well, depends on how you girth him. Come here, babe. Now, I don't know how many of you if you're subscribers to my channel, you've seen a lot of videos about Blue. As he's been developing the last few years, he gets really, when Blue gets worried or frustrated, what does he do, guys? He kicks out with his hind leg. So why do you think I'm backing him up? Because he also gets a little nervous and insecure when things are underneath of him. A lot of horses do, they can't see, right? Unless they look. So I'm giving him an opportunity with the girth, not fastened yet, just hanging, because this is normal. But look at how he's walking around. That's not normal. It's information for me, isn't it? And so what do I want to do? I want to involve him. I want to involve him. I want him to be connected. I want to listen to how he feels about this. I'm not just going to cinch it up and then deal with him. I, he, he's most important to me. How he feels about this process is everything. So he has to have his head up. When you girth, all horses need their heads up and they need to be square in the front so you don't pinch anything. And he doesn't, he doesn't know this because we don't square, we don't saddle up. So we'll do, I'll do my best just to, there you go, buddy. And just to see if I can get that. So he's already shown me that he's a little bit awkward. Hi, Bubba. But he didn't kick, which is excellent, because if he kicked, then I would have not. I would not be doing this. It's all information. This is Lovey's, so I'm gonna have to tighten it up on the other side. It's still really loose, little baby. <laughs> 